Thank you, Dr. Reyes. Uh, we will be entertaining questions. Please just approach the mic there in the middle. Please uh, introduce yourself and ask your question. Please go to the mic in the middle. Hello. Yes, I'm Attorney Voltaire Veneracion from the UP Institute of Human Rights. Um, uh, President Duterte has said that we have a drug crisis and uh, that's why he has these uh, policies. Uh, in, in your view, what's, what constitutes a drug crisis and how does uh, uh, the Philippines compare with other countries? Well, as I presented, we're still below the uh, world prevalence rate of 5.2. No, uh, at most, we, 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 if we assume that the intelligence uh, re reports that we have four million drug users, then that would mean we only have around four percent. Right? And so, uh, admittedly, we're still better off, no, uh, as far as uh, the figures are concerned. But it's an alarming trend that we have politicians involved in the drug activities. Now, we were surprised with the magnitude of surrenderies seeking treatment, and we don't have support structures in place. And that's the reason why the president wants everything addressed under his administration. We have a number. We have 1.6 million surrenderies with nowhere to go. When the president assumed we don't even have a community-based program, sanctioned community-based program, we don't have that. What we have in our law is just an inpatient program, and that's it. No? And immediately, September, the Dangerous Drugs Board issued Board Regulation Number 4, which expanded the range of uh, service that we can provide to these surrenderies, from community-based to halfway houses, to outpatient programs and inpatient programs. No? And so I think uh, it's just a matter of priority no, we feel that if we can address the drug issue, then everything will fall into place. Businesses will come, they will be amenable to in invest uh, in our country, and uh, people will feel secure and safe. And this is the model that uh, the president adopted in his hometown in Davao. And he has seen successes as far as uh, when he was still the mayor of, of Davao. And he wants to adopt those, uh, those strategies at the national level. No? So there is wisdom in trying to address this particular issue. For years, it, it, it was not prioritized by previous administrations. I, 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 I also belong to several administrations. No, I entered government uh, service during the time of, um, uh, be before ERAP. Ramos, Ramos time. And then I was there during Arab time, GMA time. I was appointed by Pinoy to the, to the Dangerous Drugs Board and now chairman of the Dangerous Drugs Board. Never did we see resources flowing to address this issue. And I think majority of the Filipinos agree and demand that we address this particular uh, concern. Okay, so thanks for that clarification. Uh, the Philippine uh, drug drug prevalence is still lower than the global? Still lower. No? Kasi okay. 5.2 yung worldwide prevalence. And if you look at yung kahit na yung 4 million, no, let's accept yung intelligence reports as a, as a fact. No? Then sabihin natin 4 million, then that's only 1%. Ay, sorry, 4% okay. no, of 100 thank, million. Thank you, Secretary. Hi, sir. I'm Dana Batnag from GG Press, a Japanese news okay. agency. I'd like to ask about the intelligence report uh, we have several intelligence agencies. Uh, yeah. So is the intelligence report that you're referring to, is that a collation of all the report of yeah. the intelligence agencies? And then uh, there are different figures. There is the national, there's the survey, mm -hmm. and there is the intelligence report. Mm -hmm. Which one is more credible to you? Because there's a difference of about at least a million. Mm -hmm. And well, uh, for me personally, both are credible. No, it's just that, uh, they have different sources. Now, one is done through a uh, scientific uh, survey. No? One is uh, gathered by the intelligence community. 
I'm not purview to how they do it in the intelligence community. I'm not a, I'm not an, I'm not an officer, no. But um, I believe those two sources of, of data should be considered valid, because the only way for you to get accurate uh, information is for you to conduct a census, and that's difficult. That's expensive, no. And so we need to consider both data as valid. No, for targeting purposes and policy development. Um, but if you don't know how the data was gathered by the intelligence op operatives, how can you say right away no, that it was I, valid? No, I'm, I'm telling you now that personally, I don't know how they conduct intelligence uh, gathering because I'm not an intelligence officer. But maybe you can ask the intelligence agency how they do it. No, But I, what I'm saying is we consider both data valid. Um, but if, if policies are based on data and there yeah. are different numbers, how do you know which number to use? For policy purposes, if you want to target a particular uh, percentage of the population, personally, I would rather uh, over-target than under-target. You, you agree sir. with me? Thank you, sir. Yeah? Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, my name is Edna Aquino, and uh, I'm not representing any organization, okay, but uh, I'm a human rights advocate. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Secretaries, for that very enlightening uh, presentation, especially of the government's um, action plan, no? five-year action plan. Um, what strikes me uh, while listening to you is the question of, uh, when that action plan is rolled out, would that mean that there will be no more statements from the president about <laughs> kill them? Uh, that's my first question, I have three. The next question that I have is that in your presentation of um, 5,000 deaths under investigation, 2,000 plus deaths in police operations, there seems that that is still a very um, significant yeah. uh, numbers, right? And the disparity, especially the 5,000 plus death under investigation, seems to be telling us something about the justice system. Correct. And the action plan doesn't seem to have made any clear reference in terms of how impunity, the Im involvement of the police in um, drug uh, trade mm -hmm. and the corruption within the police system are to be addressed, no? That seems to be nowhere or little is mentioned about that. And my third question is, will you kindly elaborate in your presentation about uh, wanting to look into the age and gender specific um, initiatives? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I already forgot your first question. <laughs> but I remember your second, so let me answer your second uh, question first, ma'am. Uh, the second question actually pertains to the details of the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug Strategy. And let me assure you, ma'am, that DOJ already submitted their uh, action plan to address the, uh, um, the system, our legal system. I agree completely with you. No, just like uh, so many third world countries, our legal system has uh, much to do to improve their capacities and uh, even competencies. No? So DOJ, oh, we requested all uh, government agencies who are members of the board and even non-members of the board to submit to us their action plan uh, to support the Philippine anti-illegal drug strategy. And part uh, the, uh, the action plans will be part of the document which we will publish. No? Actually, it's already in its third uh, version. The document is already uh, on its third version and I was told that we will still have a fourth version because uh, some of the government agencies uh, continue to amend their action plans. So part of those action plans will try to address uh, issues as far as uh, our whole judiciary uh, process is concerned. No? Uh, I did not uh, mention it in detail because that would be a very long presentation. If I will discuss all the action plans of each government agency, uh, involved in this, uh, in, fact, in fact, the whole government is involved in this drug campaign, then we will take the whole day, no? Uh, it will uh, take time. What's your third question, ma'am? 
Yeah, HNJ. So far, uh, we have existing treatment programs, but it's uh, it's a general program, unfortunately. No, and we believe in order for us to be more effective, it must be age specific and gender specific. And so there are plans to put up specialty facilities. No, so for example, in Camarines Sur, the one being operated in San Fernando, Camarines Sur will now, uh, later on, will be the designated adolescent facility. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, so far, we only have two facilities catering to women. One in Bikutan, that's in NCR, and the other one is in uh, Eversley Sanitarium in Cebu, in Visayas. But we want to expand that. No? And maybe that's the reason why our uh, female to male ratio, as I presented earlier, is skewed towards the males. No? Simply because female has no, they, they have no access no, uh, to services because we only have two government facilities catering uh, to them. And we want to expand those services. And uh, I also mentioned the specific cognitive behavioral therapies programs that we will be launching this May 11, specific for women, which will be uh, uh, piloted in Bikutan. No, and so we're looking into those options uh, to make our treatment programs more effective. Right now, the observation is that our programs are really not that good, no? not that uh, effective, because uh, people who have been into rehab more or less will relapse once or twice, uh, and that's part of the addiction process. Eh? And so we're trying to look at how to rationalize our uh, provision of services. Mom, you first, hindi ko maalala. With this strategy now, would now mean mm. that President Duterte would stop <laughs> making that statement to kill them and, to, <laughs> and telling the police that they will not be persecuted if he is at their back. Okay, let, let me tell you the official position. Uh, we derive our official position from the statement he issued during uh, his inauguration speech. No, if you if you recall, he told the police officers to do your job. Do your job. No, it does not mean do something illegal, of course. No? So he directed them to do their job. Now, if placed in a situation wherein uh, you need to defend yourself, then defend yourself. That's the order from the president. No, again, let me reiterate, last Saturday, during his ASEAN speech, he mentioned that Philippines is still a country ruled by law. No, that's our official statement. The only problem is, sometimes media would take his jokes uh, literally. No, and uh, that's always a problem. If you know the president, he will never condone illegal activities. And that's the reason why he reiterated last Saturday, Philippines is still a country ruled by law. No? But as to your question, uh, I don't know. I'm not in a position to uh, demand uh, <laughs> uh, to tell the president not to talk that way. No? But it's his personality. No? But again, let me assure you, the official position, we do not condone this EJ case. And that's the reason why we're investigating all of these things. No? Uh, unfortunately, you're correct, ma'am, medyo malaki pa po. No? We uh, still have a big uh, percentage uh, that we've yet to address, but of course, we're limited by our resources also. But let me assure you, uh, we are doing our best no, to address all those reports. Thank you. For purposes of order, we will have a question from the gentleman in purple, then the uh, lady in orange, then our gentleman in stripes. Please. Good morning, Secretary. R.P. Santiago from Ateneo Human Rights Center. Okay. And, uh, First, thank you very much for allowing this dialogue uh, to happen and for being very open. I'd like to, my, my understanding, Secretary, is that before this administration, the anti-drugs campaign was led by the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency. And uh, when the... That's uh, wrong, sir. <laughs> uh, the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency is the primary, primary implementing arm of the Dangerous Drugs Board. As far as, as, far as policies are concerned, it still emanates from the Dangerous Drugs Board, and uh, as what I presented earlier, the national, the previous national anti-drug plan of action, no, is a product 
of the Dangerous Drugs Board. Okay, thank you for the clarification, sir. Uh, it was such a coincidence, sir, that uh, there was a spike in uh, killings um, that has happened. And based on your data, there are 2,692 which died uh, under the anti-drug operations. Now, now I as I, I presented a figure of around 2,000 plus, can we go back to the figures, two, please? 2,692, sir. Yeah, who died uh, during operations. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The rest died under questionable circumstances, and that's, what, that's uh, why I mentioned we're calling it homicide. That's correct, That needs sir. further investigation. That's correct, sir. And what I wanted to ask is that uh, we, we also would like to believe that uh, the president does not want anything illegal to happen. But we'd also like to find out, out of the 2,692, for example, that uh, were killed under anti-drug operations, what have been the results of any investigations that the police might have had, if any, considering that there are instances, sir, like the killing of the Korean, where these were not investigated, but these were discovered. And there were also two other instances in uh, Mindoro uh, that... Uh, those riding in tandem were actually bemedaled police officers and another one in Cavite. Yeah, yeah. So these things happen. Um, some uh, law enforcement agents are actually involved. But how many of those in official anti-drug campaigns have actually been used by uh, these uh, wayward law enforcement agents, sir? I think this is what yeah. we need to find out. Uh, that's actually a very difficult question to answer, no? Uh, it would take uh, so much re resources, but again, uh, given the limited resources that we have, we're exhausting all means to look into those uh, killings, no? Um, as, uh, can we uh, flash the next slide, please? Sige pa, isa pa, isa pa, isa pa, isa pa, last, yan, okay. So as of January, as I mentioned, uh, for those that were uh, being investigated, we have already filed several uh, administrative and criminal charges. No? And uh, I'm sure, because this is only as of January 29. Eh? And uh, so you can get uh, better data, I think, uh, from the Philippine uh, Director Directorate for Investigation, Philippine National Police Directorate for Investigation Unit. Ano? Just to assure you that for those being investigated, actions are being taken. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the whole group, the whole PNP, uh, AIDG group, no? uh, once we learned that uh, they were involved in the killing of uh, Mr. G. Ik Ju, no? they were all uh, criminally charged no? for kidnapping and, uh, and, uh, and murder. No? And so it, uh, it brings me to my point. If it, as I mentioned earlier, if you feel that your rights have been violated in these operations, then report it no, so that it can be properly investigated. I agree with you that some of these cases may not have been reported, no, and, and in that case, it would be difficult for uh, policemen to look into those cases. No, kasi nga, ito pa lang sa dami na eh. We have so many cases, uh, we are looking into so many uh, cases already, thousands, no? And it's already uh, kumaga, uh, taking its toll to our uh, investigators no? and uh, consuming much needed resources. And so much more if those cases remain unreported. Uh, most probably, uh, the investigators would prioritize reported cases. No? And so we are, not, uh, we, we are not a first world nation no uh, we don't have their resources but again let me assure you we're doing our best to investigate everyone uh, every uh, case two, two short follow up lang sir yeah. based on this um, investigation are are these related to the 2692 that yes. you mentioned earlier yes uh, uh, i'm not purview to that information maybe you can uh, ask that uh, from the philippine national police and, and the last sir is um, in, in investigating these uh, operations and even probably those under questionable circumstances, are the law enforcement agencies open to partnership in order to investigate these? Yeah, I, uh, I was told they welcomed the support coming from the CHR when they spoke with the CHR. No? They welcomed those investigations being done 
and if CHR can help file those cases together with Napolcom, yeah, we welcome that. Salamat po. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, sir. My name is Milet Mendoza. I'm an independent humanitarian practitioner and a social development worker. I'm sorry, I beg to disagree from a lot of points that you've raised. Okay. It doesn't reconcile with what I've heard and what I've seen and heard from many victims. No? First, the policy pronouncement of the president is not even highlighted in your presentation that he will not stop until the last drug user is killed. Mm -hmm. In the last uh, meeting I had at the Ateneo, where many faith-based groups and people from the academe presented their community-based rehab program, I was shocked to know that 11,000 surrenderers in Davao City alone what does it mean? Mayor Duterte was mayor for many decades there. Why do you still have 11,000 surrenderers? Assuming you will be able to implement a comprehensive community-based drug rehab program for so long as the mafia, the infrastructure is not destroyed, where you have the perpetrators, where you tell us we go to the police, it has no integrity. They are perpetrators and how can people report to them? If I, have, I am rehabilitated and I have no livelihood, I am vulnerable to be pushed back into trading of drugs. If you have, look you, have you also listened to some families of EJK where you have orphans and widows? When the operations come, you have already the memorial car behind the riding in tandem. The families cannot claim the bodies because they have to pay 35,000. That's why you have mass graves. So what I'm saying is there has not been a proactive move for other in other departments of government. Where is DSWD in all of this? Social work supposedly has to have human rights model, DSWD. You, you keep on saying we have no money in government. We just spent $15.5 for the ASEAN. You're, and we have faith-based communities who are volunteers. They knock on people's homes and say, join us in the community-based drug rehab so that you won't be killed by Tokhang operations. So money is not an excuse in government. I can't accept your presentation. I'm sorry. Well, I respect your opinion, ma'am. No? That's your opinion, and that's also the opinion we've heard when we presented our country statement in uh, CND in Vienna. No? But again, I'm, present I'm presenting to you our programs, what we're doing, no? I'm not saying it's a perfect strategy, and we, uh, I'm saying that we still have a lot to do, and I agree with you, the SWD should be involved, and that's the reason why the president released one billion. I'm not saying we don't have enough money. I was uh, mentioning earlier that for the first time, the current administration is providing logistic and funds to address this problem. No? So again, ma'am, um, I will disagree on some of your observations, but I respect your opinion. Next question, please. Mr. Secretary, uh, this government, the Philippine government for that matter, has established a specialized unit of law enforcement as early as 1970s, mm -hmm. the Constabulary Anti-Narcotic Unit. Yeah. And that specific agency of the government basically failed in its law enforcement against drugs. Okay. Thereafter, uh, PNP organization was then established and the organization created the Narcotics Command. It also failed. PDEA has been established already for 15 years. Now I would like to ask and request your kind assessment on the process and the achievements of the law enforcement unit of this government pertaining to drugs, considering that we have poured a lot of money already in this, in this war, and yet there seems to be no significant achievement in the aspect of law enforcement. So would you be kind enough to give us that honest assessment Okay. Oh, really, what's going on with the law enforcement sector? Well, you're correct. If you focus on the enforcement agencies alone, they will fail. They will fail. If we all de depend on the Philippine National Police or PDEA alone, they will fail. 
And that's the reason why, as I presented to you, all government agencies should be involved. The health sector should, should be involved. DSWD should be involved. Part of our community-based program is to provide these surrenderies with alternative livelihood to, uh, uh, from TESDA. No? So it's a, it should involve all government agencies. That's the problem, as I was uh, mentioning earlier. No? We are too focused on what PNP and PDA is doing. Unfortunately, they will fail if you feel that um, the only strategy that could address the drug problem is the supply reduction strategy. It will fail. As mentioned by our keynote speaker earlier, we need to have a balanced approach, no? providing interventions, providing access to services, and it cannot be provided by the PNP, by the way. No? Uh, PNP cannot be in charge of providing treatment and rehab programs. No, that's not their role. It's the role of the health sector. It's the role of the SWD. You know? So we're trying to correct, we're trying to delineate functions and obligations um, in this document, in this Philippine anti-illegal drug document. And I agree with you. You will observe that we have so many uh, programs not yet in place. Now remember, the current administration is not yet one year in implementing all of these things. And it will take time. It will take time. 2017, we're still using 2016 budget. The budget that was uh, proposed and approved by the, current, by the previous administration. No? And so, the Duterte administration will only begin implementing its own programs by 2018. So you need to uh, appreciate the, the problem no, that we, we're having. Uh, there's a lot that we need to do, we agree. At the community level, we need to involve all government agencies. But again, uh, let us uh, be clear that the drug campaign is not limited to what PIDEA or PNP is implementing. No? And I agree, they will fail if you will focus only on that. No? Thank you. Can, you. can we ask those that want to ask questions to go to the floor? So let's have uh, ma'am, please. Uh, good morning. I'm Aremi Tebes, president of the Food First Information and Action Network. Uh, sir, you have provided a very good presentation, especially in terms of the program. The last slide that you showed showed a strategic intervention of the dangerous drug boards. And based on your uh, Actually, presentation... Actually, when, when I was uh, invited by the organizers to present, uh, they tasked me to present the national drug, drug situation, but I told them we should have, uh, uh, I should at least uh, inform you of the whole drug strategy, okay. no? so that you'll be aware that it's not limited to enforcement. Okay. Uh, actually, you also said that it, it is uh, in agreement with the UN arrangements that the Philippines has, including with the human rights principles. My first question is, is your strategic intervention or your program of action has a direct relationship or influences or is there a disconnect mm -hmm. with the drug campaign of the Duterte administration? That's the first one. Uh, the drug campaign of the Duterte administration, my second question is, has resulted to a lot of extrajudicial killings. So I cannot see the direct relationship of your beautiful strategic program to that of the government campaigns against drug. Mm -hmm. What are you doing since you have already funds to propagate your actions? Mm -hmm. Did you influence the government in terms of this? Mm -hmm. Or do you just follow what Duterte is saying? No, as Third. I mentioned to you, the Philippine anti-illegal drug strategy will be will still be presented in Malacañang, no? It's an offshoot um, of an old of an old yes national. Sir, yes, sir. I understand that, but it was an offshoot of an old yeah. program, correct? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And the Duterte administration's program oh. is just implemented this year or last uh, year. Again, you're correct, ma'am. No, I mentioned that uh, the old program basically adheres to the five pillar approach, uh, being. Uh, uh, endorsed by UN, by UN, no? But again, I also mentioned, unfortunately, 
it was not a priority program by the previous administrations. So it was not funded properly. I, I do understand that, sir. But how can you and did you influence the present administration mm. to implement the program of action of the Dangerous Drugs Board? Because otherwise, there will be no extrajudicial killings if the UN mm. uh, principles or the human rights principles will have been undertaken. Again, that's the reason why we reviewed the old document and we are now pursuing the new PADS. And we will be presenting this in Malacanang to influence yeah. the drug policy. No? And uh, let me also mention that uh, we do not agree with the term extrajudicial killings. As far as we are concerned, these are homicides perpetuated by some individuals which we need to pursue. No? Because uh, if you use the term EJK, then it's already sanctioned, sanctioned by the government. As a policy, we do not condone EJK. Uh, so at the present time, there is a disconnect? From the, from the previous National Anti-Drug uh, Plan of Action, yes. No? That's the reason why we now want to align this new anti-illegal drug strategy with the development uh, agenda document and the national security policy. The previous NADPA was never aligned with the national health uh, development agenda. Okay. It was never aligned with the national security policy. So it's now uh, time to align all of, all of these things. Okay, uh, that's very good, sir. However, how do you plan to align this with the, new com with the drug campaign of the administration now? We're pushing for the patch to be adopted as an executive order. So you are planning to work with the executive? We are with, the executive. With, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, sorry, with the president. Yeah, if, if this is signed by the president through an executive order, then it's the president who will be saying we need to do this properly and this is how it should be done. That's why we're pushing for this document. Eh? However, sir, if, for example, the president does not want your plan, what will you do? Well, we will look for plan B. But we're hoping uh, that uh, what we are presenting is a holistic, balanced, and I'm sure the president will listen. No, he already agreed the, to several uh, the, for the implementation of community-based programs. He already agreed to medical marijuana. He can easily be reasoned with. Diba? So we're now we're now amending the laws to allow medical marijuana. And so this is the, only, the first time, no, the only administration that would allow that. We can reason with him. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that if he sees the rationale of, the, uh, of, the, of this revised uh, drug strategy, then he will be amenable to this one. Of course, help us. No? Help us convince the president. Okay, next um, question. I have then a, the lady a short at the back. question only. Um, my name is Angelo Sprenzate. I represent uh, Human Rights Advocacy. Uh, and my question is more on research. Yes. Has there any, uh, there was no mention of funding, probably it's with the plan, but I'd like to know what is the That's a very good observation. On research. Uh, usually, usually, research suffers the first uh, blow no? in, in every program. Uh, we always uh, include research. We have a research unit in the Dangerous Drugs Board. All of the government agencies have research units. Unfortunately, it's the fund uh, that uh, uh, gets slashed no? the, uh, the, as an instinct no? by uh, government uh, implementers, unfortunately. Uh, it's the first thing they look into. It's the first thing that gets slashed in any program. But you're correct. We need more research. So um, you're saying, sir, most of the activities that have been done are not based on data? No. Uh, most of these activities are based on evidences provided to us by UN, by uh, other organizations. You have experts here with us. Actually, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Eh. Keep on researching. We already have several materials. No? Maybe what we can do is uh, try to look into the uh, cultural uh, peculiarities of implementation of the programs. No? Again, Siguro, uh, in, in those aspects, then we need some research money. And that's the reason why we're discussing with funding agencies, INL, 
uh, Colombo Plan, UNODC, to help us with that. No, but these are evidence-based policies based from the uh, uh, directives of UN no, and reputable organizations, WHO, etc. Yeah, I was actually looking more into a, uh, researching outside the palliative address of uh, the drug problem. It's uh, you, most of the re data that you have now are post-truth of having a drug problem. What are the researches done as to why people have a drug issue? Uh, as an individual? There are sociological studies that were conducted uh, by UP Manila. No? And uh, they, uh, I think this is available to the public. You can have access to this. The reasons why people are going into drugs. No? They did some, uh, some uh, studies on uh, uh, tricycle drivers, the workplace. Uh, they have researches on uh, the youth. And so there are uh, existing sociological uh, studies on this. Um, I forgot his name, uh, but it's in UP Manila. No, it's being done by uh, UP Manila. Next question, please. Good afternoon, I'm Nisa Concepcion from iDefend. Okay. Um, we really appreciate your uh, frank sharing of the challenges. And while we disagree with you about what you consider extrajudicial killings or not, we understand this is a beef between the police and the human rights community. But I really uh, appreciate that you uh, shared with us the very big challenges that you face, including new substances, the globalization of the criminal syndicates, uh, the need to expand services and access to social uh, support. Um, but it seems to me also that the government waged a war on drugs when it's not ready to confront the challenges that it will be facing, including what you already said, that uh, government agencies are not uh, cooperating uh, to address the substance abuse or rehabilitation and reintegration into society. So can I ask you, sir, meanwhile, you have 12,000 deaths and counting. Could you consider, sir, recommending to the president to suspend the war on drugs while government is trying to issue uh, uh, iron out these issues. Again, we're, uh, we're working on the premise that the war on drugs is purely an enforcement uh, uh, campaign. Now, if we suspend the campaign, then we suspend everything. We suspend putting up community-based programs. We suspend uh, access uh, to uh, Philippine health insurance, discussions uh, to Philippine health insurance. So again, let's work on the premise that the campaign is a holistic approach. As I mentioned, we're doing 24 prevention education programs nationwide. No? UPC, uh, Universal uh, Prevention Curriculum, we have adapted the Universal, Universal Prevention Curriculum uh, espoused by uh, Colombo Plan. So if we stop the campaign, we stop everything. No? What you're talking about is only the enforcement side of the campaign. No, and uh, what we, what I can do, ma'am, no, what I can do, what we can do in the board is to rationalize the campaign. And that's what we're doing with the Philippine Anti-Illegal Drug uh, Strategy. We're hoping that uh, in every program, uh, in every implementation, you experience issues, you experience concerns. No? But what is more important is, is that we learn from these experiences. No? And I think that's the reason also for this forum. No, for us to see what is working, what needs to be improved. No, and again, government alone cannot do this. No, we need the help of everybody, civil society, faith-based organizations, as well as the academe. Thank you. For the uh, for lady from the uh, back mic, please. Yes, ma'am. Then we'll go to uh, in the front mic. Thank you, uh, Secretary uh, Benji, for uh, your presentation. Um, my question has to do with the challenges that you mentioned about uh, people who inject drugs who are, um, you know, increasing numbers of, of people who inject drugs who are getting infected with HIV. And I'm, it's not just HIV, but hepatitis C. Yeah. And, and so I'm wondering where harm reduction is in the strategy and uh, whether or not there is space for that to be uh, included in the presentation you're going to make with the president. Um, you said earlier that uh, your uh, strategy is evidence-based, it conforms to uh, UN international 
uh, standards and guidelines and harm reduction is definitely uh, one of those that you know have been already endorsed uh, by the UN so uh, but it's not in the strategy so I just wanted to pose that question thank you well uh, I will I will defer that particular issue to the Department of Health no secretary Pauline Obial is also my boss when I was uh, with the Department of Health and we have been discussing several issues as far as the drug campaign is concerned. One is uh, how do we now intervene in uh, closed settings, in prisons. We don't even have programs in prisons being implemented by uh, the Bureau of Jail, BJMP, Bureau of Jail and Management and Penology, and the Bureau of Corrections. No? And so we have so many concerns, I assure you, ma'am. And uh, I can discuss it with the Department of Health on how they plan to approach providing services to persons who inject drugs. I can already, uh, already mention to you some of the initiatives that were taken by, by, by the board. Now, previously, we already allowed uh, a pilot uh, program uh, in Cebu that essentially uh, provides uh, some aspect of the uh, harm reduction program. Now, and uh, of course, uh, we defer to the wisdom of the health sector as far as this is concerned. We will confer to them as to how to approach this uh, issue. Um. <coughs> and let me assure you, whatever the Department of Health recommends, the board adopts. <coughs> Ma'am, uh, please, sorry. Ma I'm Aurora Parong. For, uh, I work with government, but it doesn't have anything to do with uh, the topic we're discussing now. So I'm here as a human rights advocate. Um, Sir, I'd like to know how you came about with the plan, the strategic plan, which you will present to the president. Because it seems that from the questions that are being raised and the concerns being raised now, uh, the non-government organizations, the human rights advocates, even some hell, uh, people and organizations who are dealing with uh, the people who are affected by the drug problem, uh, those who are affected by the killings in relation to the drug. So I, I, I just would like to know if you still have plans to at least consult them so that before you present the plan to uh, the president, the views of uh, the people who have raised these concerns will be considered in the plan. And secondly, uh -huh. Uh, Let I, me answer your first question oh, okay, first, ma'am, before I forget it, no? <laughs> uh, we consulted all government agencies, members of the boards, uh, uh, even uh, uh, the interagent. Uh, we have an interagency consortium uh, composed of faith-based organizations and NGOs in uh, coming up with the plan. I agree with you. I'll be very candid uh, just to uh, make a point. Uh, last September, the Dangerous Drugs Board issued Board Regulation Number Four. What Board Regulation Number Four essentially did was provide for guidelines on how to handle surrenderies, how to conduct proper assessment and interventions, and how to approach individuals. No, and I agree, ma'am. I'll be very candid. In some of the uh, local government units that we have visited. Unfortunately, despite the guidelines, it, it's not being followed. No? And I completely understand, ma'am. No? Uh, we have observed uh, some of the enforcement agents who are not aware that the board regulation even exists. No? So they don't know about the guidelines on how to properly conduct yourselves in these kinds of activities. No? And that's the reason why uh, we were tasked by uh, Cabinet Secretary June Evasco himself to review the, pro, uh, the, the old uh, strategy, no? incorporate the uh, new directions of the administration into a new one. No? And of course, we did that by consulting everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, we did several workshops, ma'am, uh, for your information. I think four workshops, ma'am, yan. No? And again, uh, PIDEA also requested uh, uh, government agencies to provide us with their own action plans based on their budget on how they can implement the strategies and support the new document the new document 
uh, thank you for that response, sir. It's just that I just hope those concerns that are being raised right now can be considered in the plan. Yeah. Uh, second, I, I myself, uh, ma'am, no, coming from the health sector, I will not agree on any policy that would violate rights and, uh, of course, uh, health issues no, that would uh, neglect health issues. So coming from the health sector, maybe, uh, I, I'm thinking that's the reason why I was appointed here by the president. Uh, thank you. I come from the medical sector too. Uh, so anyway, the, the second question is about accountability. Because you did mention that there's about 2,000 which is really drug related. And therefore, uh, if the president's order was just, if it is your life, that's it. Then if it's in self-defense, then uh, of course, uh, the, the police can do that. But police are not even asked to kill, but to, in fact, demobilize in case there's some dangers. That's the first, it's to demobilize. So there shouldn't be so many bullets that come to the, that cause a, fa uh, that becomes a fatal shot. In, Again. So, uh, sir, uh, can I just continue? Please, please. Because I think that there should be accountability. All these investigations about the 2,000 plus and even the, the others which may be drug related to, there has to be accountability. There should be no impunity and therefore, if there no is argument, a state no agent. No argument with that, ma'am. If there is a state agree. agent, sir, I hope that in the plan, one of the goals is that there is accountability of whoever killed in the drug campaign and that they should be punished just like any yeah. other uh, law enforcement agency if they went beyond what Ag is again, allowed by again, law. Again, uh, let me reiterate. No? Um, there are rules in engaging individuals. No? There are established procedures. And again, as I mentioned earlier, if you feel that these, these rules were not followed, no, if you feel that your rights have been violated, then report it. And uh, at, we will do our best to, to look into those situations. Thank you, sir. With the justice uh, system should really be a very close partner. Yeah, DOJ is a member of the board. Uh, IBP, the Integrated Bar of the Philippines, is a member of the board. And they are uh, aware of uh, uh, the, the policies that we're uh, presenting to you now. And uh, it's just that there are so many shortcomings in the, uh, the whole justice system no, that uh, we cannot ag uh, address here. No? Not, only on, not only on this particular issue on drugs, no? but in other uh, cases, the, we have uh, only a few. We don't even have a specialized drug court. No, unfortunately, it's just a designated, uh, the, the, the family courts are just designated uh, to address drug issues. And so we, we have a lack of uh, judges, we have a lack of prosecutors. The whole justice system in the Philippines is an issue. No, but we're working within the system, we're doing our best to address all of these uh, activities, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rao. We'll go to attorney Glenn Delitong and then uh, the senior lady, please go to the uh, Let's give the others a chance. Yes. Sige, Attorney Hi. Litong first. Hello. Um, I have two questions. One, um, with respect to your statement that the uh, plan, the strategic plan, uh, takes off from the national security plan. It's aligned. So, yeah, it's in line. Can you elaborate on that? And uh, wow. given that... <laughs> Given that there is uh, differences in I'll just provide you with the document and you read it yourself. No, it's a very long discussion. If I, if no, I tackle all that. Just give the... us a few, uh, a few statement on that. Why are you saying that the drug well, issue is Republic already Act... a national security uh, issue and that it becomes part of, you know, what we know at na as national security plan? Our so that, that a little bit on that only, Your Honor. Uh, your, sir. Our law. Uh, addresses the national issue and recognizes the fact that it's both a health issue and a security, a, a peace and order concern. That's what is provided for under Section 2 of Republic Act 9165. And therefore, we provide regulations, 
no as uh, of course also in conformity with the UN conventions pres uh, uh, prescribed by UN of course no and uh, it's also a health issue and that's the reason why we're providing services and it's aligned with the social health uh, development agenda and yes. so that's the overarching uh, principle that we're following so there's interconnection with the social development yeah agenda. we're still again we're looking at a balanced approach no approaching the problem both on the supply side and on the demand side yes and i i know for uh, because i've read the national security plan before and human security is also part of the national so i hope that will not be brushed aside that that concept of human security yeah. uh -huh. and second um, a concrete output of this forum would be a menu of recommendations on how to yeah. look into this uh, how we open. would want that recommendation we would so appreciate we, receiving those recommendations okay thank you okay ma'am I am Sister Angie Villanueva of the Association of Major Religious Superiors of the Philippines. Uh, my question is kind of simple. Uh, how do your words square with the presidential statement as regards the law enforcers who were charged with the killing of Espinosa in his jail cell, as well as the statement of PNP Chief Bato with regard to the secret detention cell? Well, I can only comment on, again, uh, what the President reiterated uh, last Saturday during the ASEAN uh, conference, no? that the Philippines is still ruled by law. And that's the official pronouncement from the President. And therefore, I assume that all those uh, charged will be properly investigated no? and uh, convicted no? if, uh, if it comes to that. And uh, we're hoping that uh, due process will uh, take its course, ma'am. Okay, yes. last question. Yeah, Walter Veneration again from UPIHR. Uh, I have a question with respect to drug policy and the death penalty. Uh, there's now a, a bill to reimpose the death penalty, and uh, many legislators are suggesting that this be limited to, the death penalty be limited to serious crimes uh, that involve drugs. Um, based on the studies and data of the Dangerous Drugs Board, Secretary Reyes, uh, does the death penalty have a deterrent effect on drug use or the drug prevalence rate? And uh, during the years when the Philippines had the death penalty, was there an increase, a decrease on the drug prevalence rate? Uh, and what's the experience of other countries with respect to this as well? Unfortunately, in the Philippines, we did not look into the correlation between the uh, drug campaign and uh, the death penalty. You know, unfortunately, we don't have that uh, data. So I really cannot say whether it's an effective measure or not. No? I prefer to leave it to the legislators, to the politicians, to discuss this. They have presented valid evidences, both pro and against uh, the death penalty provision. We in the executive are just waiting for the outcome of uh, the debates. No? And if Senate and uh, the lower house will approve the bill, then so be it, we will implement it. If they will not approve the bill, then so be it, we're happy. In the executive, we will, we will also implement it. But if the DDB is invited to the Senate hearings with respect to the reimposition of the death penalty, what would the recommendation of DDB be? Well, so far we're lucky. We have not yet been invited. And uh, <laughs> I'm thankful uh, not to meddle in this very controversial issue. Now, of course, I have my own personal opinion on this matter. But uh, we are an executive office and uh, we will follow the directive of the president if it comes to that. So far, the president has not advised us on uh, what position to take on this. As I mentioned, we have not yet been invited uh, by both houses. So. Thank you, Secretary. So Thank I'm you. just happy for that. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> one final question from uh, Dr. De Hungria. Uh, before that, let me just make an announcement. No? The meal stubs for lunch, I think, have been given by table already. For the media, your meal stubs will be given to you in the 
uh, media res registration desk outside. Okay? So, Dr. Cora. Um, Cora Diungrepo from the UPDNA lab. Um, there was a question here in terms of whether the death of the person is EJK or homicide. Yeah. Um, the answer to those questions would have to be also generated using objective scientific yeah. evidence. Um, how many of those 2,000, uh, how many of those killings have been autopsied properly to determine the cause of death? How many of those had proper crime scene investigations? Yeah. I was in a meeting with Dr. Fertun, one of our premier um, a forensic, forensic, yeah. forensic pathologists, and I asked her, Dr. Fertun, you must be doing so much because of the number of killings. And she said, in fact, I have none. So Dr. Fertun has then been asked to help determine the cause of death in all of the, the, kill, all of the uh, um, uh, cases that have been put forward. So is that going to be part of a policy such that question death should, should be properly investigated? Well, that's a very good uh, suggestion. Unfortunately, as of today, uh, as of today, I'm not purview to that information. Maybe we can ask the Philippine National Police uh, Crime Lab and the National Bureau of Investigation as to what would be the numbers that, uh, uh, of those deaths that have undergone uh, proper forensic uh, evaluation no? uh, and autopsy. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have that data right now, but we can uh, ask uh, from them. And you're correct, I agree. Uh, those deaths should be properly investigated. Thank you. We've run out of time already. Yeah, one last. Kasi sir, diretso daw sa puneraria yung bangkay. So therefore, there's no trip yeah. outside. Then to, maybe that's, that, that may be a subject That something has to be stopped uh, in terms uh, uh, of the operations. Maybe a policy can be issued uh, pertaining to this and uh, that would fall under our purview, the Dangerous Drugs Board. So uh, I will look into it, ma'am. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary Reyes, Chairman Reyes. Let's give him a big hand. So those were very tough questions. We thank uh, Secretary Smart is being gracious in answering them. We'd like to ask uh, Dr. Cora and Dean Cheldiokno to uh, give our speaker our small token of appreciation. Palakpakan po natin si uh, Secretary Reyes. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So we will now...